an exclusive one-on-one -on -one with Harry Connick Jr. Music, fame, and family, nothing is off limit. I gotta hang out with you more often. First of all, you're pumping my ego up. Today's show was all Harry all the time. Hey, I'm Harry Connick Jr. Seattle Refined starts now. Hi, everybody. I'm Gert Swanson, and this is Seattle Refined. I'm here in the Como Studios, where we bring you all sorts of great stories and shows and a lot more. One of our favorite programs, besides Refined, of course, is Harry. The Emmy-nominated show is, of course, hosted by the multi-talented Harry Connick Jr. and airs right before us at 2 p.m. here on Como. Harry is a fascinating guy. So when I got the chance to travel to Nashville to hang out with him, I jumped at the chance. Tell me a little bit about your talk show. Well, first of all, I wouldn't call it a talk show because there will be talk in it, but when you say talk show, it, it, it brings up images of uh, sort of sitting down with celebrities and interviewing them. We will have some of that, but we're gonna span so many areas that we're trying to call it an entertainment show because we're gonna have live music, we're gonna have uh, man on the street, we're gonna have uh, many different segments that we shoot outside of the studio. Uh, and it's going to be a very spontaneous entertainment filled show. You have a wish list on who your guests are going to be because I'm sure you got your, your, your iPhone's probably deep with phone numbers. <laughs> there are a lot of people that I would love to talk to, but I'll be honest with you, Guard. The people that I'm the most excited to talk to are everyday folks. We've been doing a lot of uh, filming across the country, talking to people uh, that maybe only a few people in their local communities know. And I really enjoy getting to know those people. So we're going to have a lot of celebration of just everyday regular folks uh, who have given something to their communities or done something that's special. Uh, and we like to highlight that kind of stuff. In terms of celebrities, well, you know, because being in show business, you meet people all the time that are in movies or sports or music. And it's great to talk to those people. I just want to make sure that we have a real balance of everyday folks and celebrities. You just basically want a conversation with America, right? That's exactly right. And conversation is the key word. For me, um, I'm, I'm going to be prepared in terms of, you know, let, let's say uh, Brad Pitt comes on the show or Terrence Howard comes on the show. I'm going to make sure that I know everything I need to know about them. But it's not going to be kind of read the blue card and ask them questions about their latest project. They're supposed to be there for one six minute segment and we really get into something then we'll have them stick around. They may end up staying the rest of the show. We may end up playing music together. And you've never done this before. This is a big challenge, but exciting at the same time. It is, because th 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 what I haven't done is shown up to a TV studio and shot a show that's gonna be on five days a week. I've done every other sort of version of that. You know, I've been on a lot of shows and I've you know, done movies and Broadway and albums and tours and all that stuff. But this particular uh, method of entertaining is something that I haven't done. And yeah, I guess it'll be a challenge because I've, I've never done that specific thing. But I, I really think of it in terms of uh, just an exciting new, new journey. Um, people ask sometimes if I'm nervous about it. I'm not really the nervous type. I'm just really excited to get started and to to do all of these things under the same roof. I have to say, Harry is one of the coolest and most easygoing celebrities I have ever met. And as you're about to see, he has his priorities in check. You know, I I'm gonna ask you a question. I'm not licking your boots here at all. But everybody told me, oh, you're gonna love Harry. He's like so normal. And you're normal. You're like the most normal guy I've interviewed in a, in a very, very long oh, time. thanks. And I think that'll transcend to your show. And if it does, and I think it will, I'm, it will be successful. Well, I hope so. There's it, really, you know, there's really no way to know what's going to resonate. You know, all, all I've ever done my entire career is done what felt really good to me. You know, if, if it felt real to me and it felt honest to me, then I, then I was good whether it was successful or not. What, what doesn't feel real to me is sticking to a script or yeah. pre-planning things too much. I like discovering things with the audience. How do you really keep it oh, real? Me? You keeping it real with just being, you know, mega star, Grammy winner, Emmy winner, pretty much successful with whatever you touch. 
How do you sit here and talk to me like I've known you for 20 years? Oh, well, I got to hang out with you more often. First of all, <laughs> you're pumping my ego up. No, and I, I'm not I'm just being No, honest. no, I appreciate that. Uh, personally, it's about, it's about my family. I mean, I, the way I was raised was to be kind to people and be respectful to people, show up on time, but just basic values that most of us share. Um, and, and, and respecting one another, you know. Um, I have my limitations and I have my strengths and um, I think there's a time and a place for, for all of that stuff. You know, when I go out on stage and perform, that's a time for me to show off the things that I'm, that I'm good at. Um, life's too short, I think, to get caught up in all of the, you know, the, the pomp of, of show business. That mentioned your family a little bit and and I know that's at the, the at the top of your list of what's sure. important and oh yeah talk, I'm, talk, talk about well, that. I mean y y y as a father you we can relate because I think it's, as soon as I had uh, w my wife and I had our first daughter Georgia as you know everything changes it's uh, it's not about you in the same way like that sort of uh, incredible um, selfish drive you have to do whatever you want to do to become successful changes slightly because now the reasons that you're doing things are multi-pronged. I mean, it's not only about me. I got to feed my child and set an example for my child and my wife feels the same way. Um, and and th those become the most important things. And as an artist, as a performer, it actually freed me up to even uh, take, take more risks because I didn't take it as seriously in the same way. Man, I've been so so blessed. I I I, uh, I wouldn't trade a day of it for anything. We're not finished with Harry just yet. What's the name of that that market out there in uh, Pike Place? In, yeah, Pike Place. Yeah. yeah, I love Pike Place. And Seattle loves Harry Connick. More of our exclusive one-on-one -on -one with Harry, including all his favorite Northwest haunts. Welcome back to Seattle Refined. Today we're all about Harry, Harry Connick Jr., that is. Harry is one of the most talented people I've ever met. He acts, he sings, he composes, he plays at sold-out venues all across the globe. And he's a nice guy, too. Refine was lucky enough to catch up with Harry last year during a concert stop in Nashville. And it turns out he has a soft spot for Seattle. So let's talk a little bit about uh, about Seattle. What do you know about Seattle? Well, I have some fond memories of Seattle, going back to Jazz Alley, yeah. uh, like, I mean, almost probably almost 30 years ago, playing there, you know, solo piano with my bass player. Um, and then as I started to gain some notoriety, I started playing in some bigger places, and uh, Chateau Saint-Michel out there is one of right. my favorite places to play. It, it, it's an incredible part uh, of the country that I love very, very much. I, I love um, walking around in the outside markets and, um, what's the name of that that market out there in uh, Pike Place? In, yeah, Pike Place. Yeah. yeah, I love Pike Place. In fact, um, I have um, on my phone when my dad calls. We were walking through Pike Place a couple of years ago, and he had a cap on. And uh, I turned around. I saw him. He was walking behind me, and he kind of he kind of tipped his hat to me, and I took his picture. And that's what comes up when he calls oh, me. So nice. I, I just have a lot, a lot of nice memories of that. And. What, what do you know about the food? I have incredible seafood in Seattle. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the seafood. It's just, but it's different, you know, the way it's prepared out there than in New Orleans. Uh, I like, uh, they make those, um, when you walk through that market and they have, you can get that fresh crab out there. Yeah, and the, oh the Dungeness my, crab. Oh my gosh, I could eat that all day long. Mm. I love it out there. And then you, I mean, the coffee out there is some of the best in the world, so. I like all that stuff. I like walking around and just hanging out with the folks out there. So are you a New Orleans guy or are you a New York City guy? Well, my mom was born in New York City. My dad was born in Mobile, Alabama. And then after they got married, they moved to New Orleans. So I'm a New Orleans guy, but I've lived in New York since 86. So I, I, I love New York very, very much. I live in Connecticut now, but I've lived in that area since 86. But if you ask me if I was a New Orleans guy, I'm going to say yes, only because it's so much a part of who I am and who I continue to be. I'm home in New Orleans a lot and still have a lot of connections there. So if these producers came up to you and said, hey, Harry, we're going to do Harry, 
but we don't want any music. Would you still do it? No, absolutely not. Two things that I really wanted. One was I want to shoot it in New York because that's very close to where I live, and I have to have my band. To have my band as a functioning character in my show, sort of as my co-host on the show, was paramount to me. If I didn't have that, I, I, I'm not a talk show host. Like that's not, that's not really what I do. That's a whole separate thing. Uh, I'm a guy who loves to entertain and share the joy I have of entertaining with whoever happens to be sitting in that chair with me. So had the band not been a part of it, we couldn't do it. That's why this is such a rare uh, opportunity for me is to be able to do exactly what I want to do, this, exactly how I want to do it. Coming up on Seattle Refined. Seattle's been amazing. I've had some of the best shows of my life at Chateau Saint-Michel. Daytime's golden boy, Harry Connick Jr., gets personal at one of Nashville's most sacred sites. Welcome back to Seattle Refined. I'm Gard Swanson. Well, one of the real pleasures of my job is meeting celebrities you admire and then having them turn out to be even cooler than you imagined possible. The thing, 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 thing. That's what happened when I got to spend the day with music superstar Harry Connick. Harry was so chill, and unlike a lot of celebrities, he didn't limit the conversation. In fact, nothing was off limits. As a result, I got a real glimpse of what makes this genius tick. Here we are at Nashville's legendary Ryman Auditorium. Are you a perfectionist? Oh yeah, definitely. As much as I can be with the things that I have control over, you know what I mean? Like I'll come off stage doing some shows I thought were pretty good, but it's not like I've ever given a show that I said, no, that was the greatest show of all time. I mean, I'm always, you know, but almost anybody I know that's in, in 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 this business is it's got to be on some level of perfectionist. You have to be. What about being here at the Ryman? I mean, this oh, it's heavy. Isn't it heavy? It's real heavy, especially when you walk backstage and you see all of the pictures of the legends that have played here. I mean, it's it's a lot of history here, and, and the people in Nashville really get music. I mean, every other person here seems like they're a musician. I took my daughter Charlotte out on Broadway, and like every establishment had a live band plan. There are so many musicians here. Why am I on this stage and not playing across the street in the bar room? I take that stuff very seriously and right. it makes you step up your game, you know, because you know that half of these people are players or no players or producers or and they, they they're not they're not gonna go easy on you. They want to they want to hear what you're doing. So I, I, I make sure I take that really seriously. You know, uh, I've talked to a lot of athletes in my career, and a lot of them, like a lot of NBA guys, and I say, can you tell the difference if you're playing in Boston on their court or playing in Los Angeles? Do you get that with the same stages? Here you're at the Ryman, an incredible facility, incredible energy, and then maybe you're playing in Seattle or San Francisco. Can you tell? Do you, is there a different vibe? The, the, there, the, uh, every place is pretty much the same, except for a few places that feel slightly different. Like some places, you the people that have access to the most arts, are normally the most attentive. To dance with the man with that fine umbrella. If I play like in Tulsa, Oklahoma, those people will come out and be a lot louder only because it's just a different, it's a different feel. How about it, Seattle? I mean, I, Seattle's been amazing. I've had some of the best shows of my life at Chateau Saint-Michel. Yeah. I mean, really amazing shows. And I think it's because it's a special event, sort of. Like, it's not like uh, in New York City, there's a there's a fancy concert going on 10 times a night. You know, Chateau Saint-Michel, those people come out and, and, they, and they, they, they bring their stuff and they sit out under the stars and it's more of an event. I think they're just ready to party, ready to have a good time. Is it different when you when you uh, come out or you see, still have the same energy to come out and do this show and you got a big show tonight? I remember doing, um, my, the first time I, I was playing the lead on Broadway in a show called The Pajama Game. This is a really weird phenomenon. I ha I've never been able to understand it. And it sounds like an exa exaggeration, but it's really not. Um, when I'm standing backstage before I go on on this Broadway show, I, I, if you ask me to tell you the first line I had, I, I couldn't do it. If you ask me to tell you the first song I was singing, it's almost like, like something was preventing me from uh, like remembering your lines, Access, it? Yeah, I mean, like, I couldn't tell you anything. And as soon as I would get on stage, it was just a different, it was like a different me almost. It was almost like an altered reality. 
And it's almost like that on stage. Like, if you're talking to me right now, knowing that I'm going to be on stage singing in an hour, you probably say, like, this guy is, there's no way that guy is going to do an energetic two-hour show because I don't feel like that right now. But when I get out here at 8 o'clock, it's just a different, it's a different thing. It's almost like my brain is sort of trying to survive, saying, look, I got you. But just right now, just we're going to hang out and be low-key. It's a good high, isn't it? A good natural high when it's you have a good show. the best thing in the world. You know, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I, I, I don't need it, I really don't need it. I have the, the most incredible job and I have the greatest family and I mean, that's about as high as you can get, I think. Seattle Refined is not finished with Harry just yet. Coming up, an exclusive music lesson. Bom, that's it, bom. not quite like that. <laughs> um, anyway. Auditions are next Tuesday. <laughs> the oh-so-cool host of Harry pulls back the curtain on his musical genius only for Refined. Welcome back to Seattle Refined. Some celebrities let their people run the show. You know, agents and publicists, but not Harry Connick Jr. Connick hosts his show Harry weekdays at 2 p.m. here on Como. And in my exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with him, I learned when it comes to his career, Connick calls all the shots. When I wake up in the morning, the last thing I think about is, is what I've done. For example, today I woke up, and the, the only thing that was on my mind other than talking to you was, I have to write bumper music for my show because all the music that's played on the show has to get written by somebody, and in this case, it's me. How do you and do that? How do you do that? You just do it. You just have to do it. It's like changing a diaper, right? Like, you don't sit around and think about it. You do it. You, it, you get in front of the piano and you start You just start, stuff start writing. In this case, it's, front of, it, it's a, in front of a computer, which makes things easier. To dance with the man with that fine umbrella, now she's born. Instead of writing the notes out by hand, I'll write the notes using my computer. And then there's a guy in my band who takes every line from the score. The score is a collection of everyone's parts. Right. Trumpet, saxophone, trombone, bass, guitar. And he takes everyone's respective lines and gives it to them individually and puts it on one of these computers. So they're still reading the music, mm -hmm. but they don't have to turn pages. So this song is for my bass player. It's called The Project. So what you do is you hit this, and the top of the next page comes up. So like, OK, I'm looking at this music yeah. right here. Tell me what that note is. Who's playing that, and what is That's that? my bass player. That, so this is, a, this is a bar. That's one bar, two bars, and there's three bars, wow. right? So if this is the beat, this goes the don't don't think think the think 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 the think 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 so that's the rhythm that my bass player would play this is a shuffle that's it not quite like that um anyway auditions are next tuesday no but that's that's kind of no 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 you're good you're good but that's that's what it is and that way if if with all of these different songs if I want to play Jesus on the main line, they don't have to go sifting through a bunch of music to find it. So, and here's what happens. If, if you're my band and I'm singing and they, I finish a song and say, thank you very much, I'll turn to you and I'll go, Jesus on the main line. I'll decide then what we're going to do. And they can pull it up immediately and I turn around and I sing Jesus on the main line. So is that going to be how your show is too? I mean, oh yeah. Is that organic? That organic, every day. And you want it like that? Oh yeah, it's got to be like that. And then there's going to be problems when the band can't get the music, and that's where some of the greatest television lies. Like, that, that I don't mind that stuff. I love that. Yeah, see, I think... It's real. It's real, and it's... If you go in there with all of these set rules, and it has to be this way, th there's people whose job it is to make sure that the lights work, the cameras work. What happens if the light goes out? Right. Then we talk about the light going out. I mean, it's okay. Like, we're not operating on people here. You know, it's okay to... To do that and if it works it works and if it doesn't you know that's that's okay too it's an entertainment show yeah. so it's okay you know well Harry Connick Jr. Harry is gonna be successful I can feel it thanks right, give, me, give me some love appreciate it man. oh man I wish you the best thank you so All right, much I'm gonna come to New York and see you uh, man I hope so and I hope I get to come to Seattle and see you too absolutely for sure thanks man thank you you sure I can't be a part of your band maybe not today <laughs> okay next week <laughs> thanks for joining us today on refined we'll see you next time